Welcome to another program exam solution tutorial for the 2019 Paper 1 AQA text adventure uh, game and today we're going to be looking at the game file structure. So obviously as always I'm assuming you are studying for the AQA exam that you've already been given the code, you've already been given the pre-release, you've had a quick look at the game files. Um, for this particular uh, solution I'm assuming that you know roughly how a bin um, how binary reader writer works in your programming language um, so in .NET it's called binary reader um, and I'm also assuming that you've seen some form of text editor before if you haven't go and look at what a text editor is and if you don't know how your programming language currently writes a binary file Again, I recommend you go away and do that. That's not the purpose of this video. So, game files. You are given two game files, flag 1, which starts you in the blue room, flag 2, which starts you in the guard room. As far as I can tell, there's no difference between the two game files other than your location and the things that you would expect to happen. So effectively, this flag 2 is effectively as if you'd played the game from flag one but saved it at the point you got into a guard room and therefore everything else that's happened in the game kind of makes sense. Feel free after today to have a little look to see if you can find any differences that are meaningful. But anyway, so let's get straight onto this file structure. There is a bit of information on the pre release but uh, you really need to look at the programming code and the file itself to get a proper idea of the file structure. But effectively, it's split into three. List of characters, list of places, list of items. So let's have a little look at the characters. Uh, before I list this, let's go on to the game code. And you can see that we're in the load game, which actually pulls out... Uh, all the information from the file using a binary reader. This is VB. Uh, I am sure C Sharp is almost identical, and no doubt Python is not a million miles away from it either. You can see, oops, not the last bit, you can see that that is the same order as the, as mentioned in the pre release. So let's unpack that in a bit more careful. Start off with how many characters there are, 4 bytes, 32 bits. Now for each character, there's an ID, also allocated 4 bytes, uh, name, strings stored in binary are given a length byte and then that many bytes worth of uh, characters. So if it was 4 characters, there'd be 1 byte with a number 4 and then there'd be 4 bytes holding the, the characters for, uh, later on. A description, description, a description, also a string, length with a set of bytes, your current location as four bytes. And whoops, let's have a quick look at what that looks in a file. So I'm using hext. Hext is a lovely little um, hex editor, well featured. Google it, uh, it's a free download. Um, please donate to the people who have made this, they keep it updated well and um, give me a second, there's the link and uh, this is a quality piece of software and I think for free software without adverts it is worth you occasionally donating to it. Uh, I'm not sponsored by these guys in any way, that's just my, it's a little bit like occasionally donating to Wikipedia whatever it happens to be. There are other hex editors available. I'm not necessarily endorsing this. This is just the one I like using. Okay. So, what did we say? Number of characters, four bytes. So that's the first four bytes. One, two, three, four. And we can look at the, oops, we can look at the data inspect to see that those four bytes are holding the number two. This file, written by um, a Microsoft binary uh, writer and being read by, by a binary reader, 
has it starting with the smallest significant the least significant bit unfortunately each byte so at least significant byte each byte has its least significant nibble to the right of it so that is the least significant byte but that two is the least significant nibble of that byte i'll let you look at that in more detail but basically that equals the number two so in other words there are two characters right let's have a look at the first character id first four bytes let's look at the next four bytes dun, 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 dun. That is given the ID 1001. If you read the pre release, you know that is for the player character. We now have a name. One byte with how many characters are in the name. So the next two bytes are the character's name, which is me. Description string 15 bytes so 15 characters go to length equals 15 and you can see that these bytes contain the codes for ASCII for you think you look okay finally we've got current location four bytes go to the next four bytes one two three four and we can see that we're in location one We could keep on with this, but let's, so let's just do it for one more. So we're now on to, that's the end of me. Let's have a quick look at the next character. So the next character, one, two, three, four, has got the ID 1002. Let's have a quick look at that. Seems to make sense. Five characters. One, two, three, four, five. We look over here, it's a guard. Description. Um, where are we? 60 characters. So we don't need to pull up a length of 60. Oops, sorry. And 60 characters. All right. Apparently. Okay. Be easy for us to cover this. 60, that's not right. Anyway. Um, sorry. <clears throat> this is the description of the guard. Uh, okay, actually, that's one more there. That is actually not even, I know it looks like. Um, it looks like a, a piece of uh, binary data that's just been encoded as a full stop. But look, 2E, code 46, that's a full stop. So that is actually part of the description. It ends in a full stop. Okay, sorry, that's why I was getting confused. So current location, four bytes. So let's have a look at this one, two, three, four. And the guard's in location five. Okay, so that is now all of the characters because when we looked at the start there are two characters and hopefully that that made sense okay let's have a little look at places number of places four bytes an id four bytes description string a length byte with a set of bytes then we have an absolutely shocking way of encoding i know this makes the processing easier but um, there's a bit of me that thinks I really, 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 really wish that they had um, done this object oriented. I know they've used structures, but anyway, I won't start moaning about that now. <clears throat> we'll only look at one place, otherwise, this is going to be tedious. Um, but uh, I suppose you want to look at the code just so you can see that. It's exactly the same structure. And now let's pull the old hex editor up. Uh, we were there. And we looked at his location being 5. 
So this should be the start of the number of places. So there are eight places, which makes sense. And if we have a quick look, after we've got our eight places, we've immediately got an ID. So ID one, unsurprisingly, is one. We've then got um, a description and it is a very long description. Uh, same BD, I'll be able to do the same thing again. We had BC and if well, sorry, it's annoying. Apparently, we've got uh, BC characters, and if I go to the end of it, there we go. We've got BC length as well, so that makes sense uh, for the description. And you can read the description. If we now have a little look down, we've now got. One, two, three, four, five, six sets of four bytes. Making sure I don't accidentally catch that full stop, which I have. One, nothing. Two, nothing. Three, nothing. Four, nothing. Five, nothing. Six, nothing. At first glance, that looks a bit confusing because we've been told, if you know the game, that there are doors both west and east and north from memory. But all of those doors are currently closed. So if I go, try and go north, east, or west, or if you know there's a trapdoor down, then it won't let me. So the default position of those um, is is closed. So they're all zero. Um, if we go to that corridor, long empty corridor, blah 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 blah. blah. So this has got um, an opening to the west. So if I go north, east, south, west, you can see that um, on the west there is an opening that you can actually walk straight through without having to open it and that's to location 5. I will let you, now you've got access to these tools, go through and work out uh, each of the locations and one of the things I'm getting my students to do, getting you guys to do, is to draw a map. And once you've got this uh, information, you really ought to number your locations with the correct IDs. So, let's have a little look further on. So, we've now got uh, places. And, obviously, sorry, I've just made this point. Crucially, the ID is zero if there's no location in that direction that you can access, that you can walk to. Okay, items. Number of items, ID, description. We've now got status, location, name, commands and results. This status is explained in the pre-release very briefly, as are commands and results. These two are delimited, so that for a particular command there's a particular result. Ron separating it up or having it as a list, they've just got it as a delimited string, which makes it a right pain in the butt to, to look at and process. Um, or certainly to understand the processing. Let's have a quick look at the file. So if we go down here, doo -doo -doo -doo. Location, another location, a, well, 
think this is the last location. No, so there's so much there's a ladder going around, there's a shelf going around, there's one on the floor. But I'm 90% sure that's the last location. One, north, east, south, west, up, down. Uh, that there is set to be allowed to go up because you can only be in that location if you've opened the trap door and gone down it. So that is up back to location one. So there isn't a down. And now we have the number of items. So there's 21 items apparently. I suppose I ought to inspect all four bytes. One, two, three, four. Um, oh, I'm an idiot. What have I just done? I've just interpreted that as um, deanery rather than hex. There's 33 items. I'm sorry. So items include doors, um, keys, and all the all the rest of it. Anything that you can do something with. So. 33 items, and the first one has got an ID of 2001, which, if you've read the pre release, is the, the lowest of the IDs available to items. We've then got something with 12 characters as its description, length 12. There we go. And we've now got, what's the next thing on the list? A status. Five byte status. One, two, three, four, five. Apparently it's close. It's current status. Don't know why that's not closed. Um, I've got a location. Its location is in location one. Uh, it's got a name. Location is four bytes. I'm very sorry, I ought to just do the four bytes. One, two, three, four. So it's still one. It's now got a name with ten characters in, and that's Green Door, as you can see. And we now have, so name is Green Door, commands and results. And this is a string with so many bytes. So let's have a little look. It's sure that's 10. Yeah, 10, lovely. One. So there it is. So the commands associated with the green door are open and close. And the results are how many other? There's. 15 characters associated with that. 15. Oh, sorry, 1 5. Keep getting my. These actually are in deanery, uh, everything else in hex. So, uh, we've got north. These are actually 15 bytes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There, F, of course, it is. Um, so we've got north, three, north, is it? Results. It is F, okay. Doesn't really make sense this to me, I've got to be honest. North, I've then got three, and then I've got north, comma, naught. <coughs> it looks like I've got. Something random here. What's the last bit on this? Okay, I'll be absolutely honest with you. Um, without looking at this again, I close dot north three. Without looking at this again, I can't quite make head and tail of those commands. It's a bit annoying, uh, but I will have another look and uh, come back to it. Anyway. Uh, oh, I know what it is. Sorry, I remembered now. So, we've got open, close, north. That's the location of where you go to 
to north. But um, I can't remember what the semicolon north is for, but it doesn't matter. I'll let you look that up yourselves and work it out. Um, and then you've got a further description um, as part of the results. Okay, uh, that is for examine, I think. Open close. Anyway, I'll be honest with you, I lose the plot on where these delimiters start and stop. Basically, we stop. Um, we stop somewhere here. Just double check. Oh, right. I've just remembered what this is. Sorry, I'm looking you about. Um, the green door has got two entries. It's got the entry from the north and the entry from the south. And its ID is separated by 10,000. It's actually mentioned in the pre-release. Uh, so we've got a green door north and a green door south. And you can see that whereas the green door north has got 2,001, green door south has got 12,001 as, um, as its ID. But you are going to have to take look at these a few times to get your head around um, the link between commands and results. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I have fully, but uh, it's just a case of understanding where the delimiters come in. Uh, we will definitely, definitely, definitely look at this in more detail when we actually look at processing this data in the gameplay of the code. Right, a few little notes on IDs. Whoops. Um, this is all in the pre-release but not very very clear uh, one thing I would say is that you really ought to um, just check that an item can have a location as a character a place and I've called it a place where I'm the location uh, or another item so you're allowed to have items within items so for instance the shelf contains the black dice or the shelves contain the book that sort of thing Right, I have spent 22 minutes rambling on about this, so what? There are plenty of things in this file, in those files that are not really utilised in the game particularly. Adding a new location item or character would, would not, I'll be honest with you, would not be easy. Uh, I've not looked into it yet, but um, yeah, it would be a bit of a pain. However, writing code to extract information from the file, that, that's quite possible. Processing the information taken from the file um, and its structure is, is, is very, very, very doable. However, what ideas do you have? This is um, a really annoyingly structured file, if I'm going to be honest with you, particularly that delimited stuff. What else could they, they do with it? Feel free to comment, feel free to suggest your ideas, uh, feel free to ask questions about it as well. I'm more, more than happy to people to, to post comments. Next time, I'm hopefully going to give you a little overview video about the code and particularly some of my first thoughts about the bugs, changes, possible extensions and crucially some of the key tasks you should do to prepare for paper one. Um, Hopefully you found that file structure video uh, useful. Sorry, a couple of times I got uh, a little bit waylaid in exactly what was going on with it. I hope you are able to make head and tail of it now that I've given you an overview. Uh, don't give up with it. Make sure you get hold of that hex editor. Make sure you really unpick the, the, the binary from this. Uh, there's a few interesting things as you as you look through it. And crucially, if you wanted to, you could change some things and uh, make the red dice um, always throw a six or whatever it happened to be. I mean, maybe that's a possible extension. I've got no idea. But until next time, hope you found this useful. Goodbye.